What's up guys, in this video what I wanna do is help you be able to factor out the GCF when you have a polynomial that looks kind of like a mess, something like this. Okay, so when you look at this problem, you might say like, yeah, that does look like a mess, right? We have numbers, we have x's, we have y's. And furthermore, they don't all share the exact same thing, right? When we think about the greatest common factor, I want you to think the greatest common factor, the greatest variable, number, or term that evenly divides into everything that you have, right? So you can see like this has an x, 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 but no x, right? Y, 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 no y, right? Number, 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 no numbers. So there's not one simple term that we can actually factor out or divide into all of these terms. So by factoring out by the GCF in a problem like this, it's kind of a mess, right? We can't do it for all these. So a lot of students would just at this point just kind of give up. But what I want you to do is kind of look for some certain patterns. And some of the patterns that I look into for a problem like this, if I want to factor, factor this out, is say, all right, well, how about we just group them, right? If I just kind of take a look at these first two terms, do they have something in common, right? And again, something in common that I can evenly divide into them. That's what we call our GCF. Now I'm gonna write the GCF up above, right? So you recognize they both have an X. Now what's the highest power of X that I can evenly divide into both of these? Well, that's just going to be an X squared. They both don't share a number, nor do they share a Y. So that is gonna be my greatest common factor in that in, um, for those two terms. What about for these two terms, right? Well, you can see that they both share an X. Now the highest power in this case is just gonna be an X to the first power, right? Because I can't divide an X squared into this, right? Because the highest power here is already X to the first power. So therefore, that's the highest I can go here. And then they both share Y, so that's gonna be that GCF. And then for my last two terms, they both don't share an X or a numbers, but you can see that I do have a Y squared. So therefore, I can go ahead and um, label that as my GCF for the last two terms. Now remember, when you are factoring out by the GCF, basically what you're doing, you are dividing out the terms that they have in common. So when I say like factor like the GCF out, what I basically mean is like take those two terms and divide it by your greatest common factor. So let's just go ahead and work this one kind of slowly and then, um, then we'll kind of see like how exactly it works. Okay, so I recognize that the greatest common factor of these two terms was an x squared, right? That was the largest term that could evenly divide into both of them evenly. And let's go and see if that works, right? So x squared divided into 3x cubed, they're still gonna leave me with a three as well as an x. And then here, I'm gonna have an x squared divided by negative x squared um, times y, and that's just gonna leave me with a minus a y. Now, a lot of times students will get confused here and you're like, all right, well, you just divide it out, like where does the x squared go? Well, what we're doing is, remember, when we're factoring, or the purpose of factoring is to rewrite an expression as a multiplication problem. So when we divide this term out by x squared, what we're simply gonna do is rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Now again, we can always go back and check our work, right? When we multiply this x squared times the three x and times this negative y, is that gonna give us back our original example, right? x squared times three x is going to give you a three x cubed, right, you can see. And then x squared times a negative y is gonna give us a negative x squared y. Okay, so what we're gonna do is identify that greatest common factor, divide it evenly into those terms, and then rewrite it as a multiplication problem. We already did this one correctly, right? So this is going to be an x squared times a three x minus a y. And then over here, we say, all right, well, let's divide these by six x. Now again, like when we're factoring out the six x, what you can automatically already do is say, all right, well, I'm just gonna rewrite this on the outside of the parentheses, right? And then what's inside the parentheses is what's gonna be left over. So when I divide a six x squared um, by y by a, oh, I forgot. There's a two, right? You can write a two in common there. So you can also divide this by a two. So let's go ahead and fix this up. Okay, so now I can take this two divided by six. That's gonna leave me with a three, right? And then here the x and the um, x is gonna divide into x squared, x times. Then y squared to y squared is gonna give us a minus one, but therefore I recognize something's a problem. And when I go and take a look at my problem, I realize, oh, I actually wrote this problem wrong. This is actually supposed to be a square. Now, the reason why I recognize this example, or I recognize there is a mistake here, is you're gonna see in this as we move on to the next step. So therefore now I can rewrite this as a minus a y, because I'm looking for something specific when I'm factoring by grouping. And I'll get to that again in just a second. Over here, when I factor out the um, y squared, again, what we're gonna be left with is a y squared divides into a three x, or the three x y squared, it's gonna be three x times, and then y squared divides into a y cubed y times. So you can see I'm scrunching everything up, but there's something very, very important. And there's a reason why I use my color coding in a special way because what I identified or what I was able to figure out here is look at how these are all the same, right? So each of these terms, now again, remember, terms, right, of a polynomial are separated by addition and subtraction. So you can see here, we have a grouping of this term plus this term plus this term, which is squinched all the way to the side. Now again, what we wanna do is say, all right, what is it that they have in common? What do these all share in common? Now, obviously I color coded them for you, Right? And the GCF in this case now is going to be a 3x minus y. 
So now let's go ahead and divide that into each and every one of these terms. Now, obviously, hopefully you recognize that like anything divided by itself is just going to be one. So again, though, what we do when we factor it out, all right, when we divide that term, we're going to rewrite that now as our multiplication. And that's now going to be times, what am I, right, 3x minus y. Um, that's going to be times now what's left over, which is going to be in the orange. Use your parentheses, because remember, we're multiplying this. And voila, we have now factored by grouping not once, but twice of this complete mess of a problem. Now, if you think factoring twice was hard, go and check out the next video where I'm going to show you how to factor three times.